Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Uplifting Content Podcast. I'm your host, Ione Butler, and my guest today is Renee Garcia, and we are going to be talking about reality transurfing. So, Renee, thank you for joining me today. How's it going? Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's going well. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so, first, can you tell us what is reality transurfing? Please. <laughs> Okay, so reality transurfing, I know it's kind of a funny name. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a series of concepts and techniques that uh, sort of uh, allow you to not only construct a new worldview, but also allow you to effectively um, change your habits and your patterns with the way that you were connecting with your reality uh, in a new way to enhance life, make things seem uh, more beautiful, more lively, have more success, have better relationships, um, not feel like you're always, um, you know, you never have enough time, you don't get the things done or accomplished that you want to in life, uh, maybe relationships are sucking you dry, maybe life is appearing dull or, um, just not exciting to you anymore. And reality transurfing is a way to sort of get it all going again. And as Vadim Zeeland, the author states, to make you feel like a child again, sort of excited by life and, uh, you know, full of happy. opportunity and potential. Yes. Yes. Like when you, when you, when you were a kid and you would think about you know, what you want to be or all the adventures that were in front of you. I mean, I know that I thought like that. And then as things went on and life starts to, you know, hinder you from yourself or um, just sort of put things on you that uh, you feel that you'll never be able to live who you truly want to be. That mm -hmm. is, you know, it happens to all of us and transurfing kind of removes those layers one by one and allows you to exist in a whole new way. This sounds very fascinating. Um, and just before we recorded, started recording this interview, you were talking about what you're up to at the moment and you're saying that a lot of the things that are going on with you have, have come from this work that you've been doing. So could you tell us how you discovered reality transurfing and how you got into it and, and, and what you're doing now, please? Oh, yes. Well, that's a fascinating story. Um, I, I lived in Los Angeles for nearly 20 years. Um, I fought tooth and nail to gain some, you know, some success in my life. I created a business. I had a, you know, a seemingly um, great looking life from the outside, but inside I was struggling. I had everything that I wanted material wise and there really in my mind at that point there was no reason why I should be as unhappy as I were but I was and um, then I found transurfing and I actually found it just um, by accident and when I saw the two words on the internet uh, there was like a light that just shown and it it I, I knew immediately that it was something for me I started listening to the audio online and it just uh, within hours I started to see things differently and I, I just continued with it I bought the books um, then I uh, decided that I wanted to be an instructor uh, I got to go to Russia and meet the author, Vadim Zeeland. We had a five-hour sit-down lunch together, which was one of the most awesome experiences of my life. Um, and now I travel around and sort of share my story. And yeah, it's, um, uh, I don't even recognize my life anymore. It's changed that much. And I really do contribute it to, to transurfing for sure. So the, the, the book that you mentioned, there's like a, all of the books are online as an audio on his website. And there's also quite a, a comprehensive book, um, about the work that you can read, but you, so you sort of implement, and it's all about these techniques, the practices of reality transurfing, right? And so now you teach that to people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so I created a manual. Uh, it took me three years to create. Um, I, I've shown the manual to Vadim and he's looked through it and he, he likes it and he approves it. 
Um, it's to teach a pretty comprehensive book, like you said, in a short amount of time. You know, it's, it's, it's succinct. It's not a, you know, thing that's going to take you two months to, you know, start gaining benefits from mm -hmm. if, you know, if I'm instructing it. Uh, the book is probably a solid month's read if you, you know, are into Commit reading. to it. Yeah, or you've got the like, audio. It's a five, 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 six hour audio. If, yes. If that works for people too. It's on YouTube. Yes. The audio is brilliant. I've listened to the audio many, many times. That's where I started. Um, so, you know, you can really go about it in any of the ways, the instruction, the book or the audio. It's, it's uh, once you start to hear the information or, or read it, it, it just, you, it happens right away. I mean, it's not mm. something that takes a while to start to work so yeah it doesn't really matter how you get the information as long as you get it so and because I'd read in your bio before you've gone you've experienced depression like you just mentioned you're at a point in your life living in LA where you weren't happy with where you're at that's definitely something I have felt and I know a lot of people one friend in particular right now is, is struggling with that a lot feeling just I should be more successful than I am right now and and giving himself a hard time about that and so when you found this, can you tell me about, um, was it simply you were just reading the book and then all your, everything started to change and you just had, had new beliefs? Like what exactly happens or what is the work that you do with okay. it? Yes. Yeah. I understand your question. Um, you know, I think the first thing that happened for me, uh, I had, I had left LA and I had moved to Portland. I didn't know what I was going to do. I knew that I needed to sort of renovate my lifestyle or renovate my life. I needed to create a new paradigm. Um, I had listened a lot to Bob Proctor. I'm sure you're familiar with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shifting your paradigm. And I heard this thing a lot, but I didn't quite understand what, what it meant or what it entailed. And I was going for long walks um, at this point in my life. And that's when I was listening to the audio. So I would go for like five or 10 mile walks in Portland in the hills. And I would listen to this. And it, it just, I, I, first of all, I came out of my head, which mm -hmm. is where most of us are existing. The anxiety and the stress. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We're inside. We're just turning and turning and turning, making matters worse for ourselves. And I started to, you know, just listen to this audio and look at my surroundings. So the, it, coming out of my head, I actually had an opportunity to see what was around me, see opportunities, see opportunities to, to experience beauty or a new, realize a new goal. Believe it or not, goals are not, I know people think that, you know, you need to think of what you need to do to make money, or you need to think of what you need to do to start a new business, but it's not like that. The opportunities are going to present themselves to you outside of you, mm -hmm. and you just need to be awake and aware to see it and then to connect with it. Right. Mm -hmm. So the first and you, can't, step, you can't be aware of that stuff when you're all in your head and you're dealing with no. crap because you're just missing everything. Yeah. You miss everything. You mm -hmm. miss everything. So one of the, one of the, the, the fundamentals of trans surfing, um, there's two concepts. It's called inner importance and outer importance, or I'm sorry, inner intention and outer intention. There is also inner importance and outer importance. And they're somewhat connected, but inner intention and outer intention. So inner intention is when we use our own will to try to derive from our reality the things that we want, right? Mm -hmm. It's, I want this, or I want to be wealthy, or I want to be successful, and I'm go going to go about it in the ways that I deem appropriate, right? That's mm -hmm. working with inner intention. Outer intention is when you use the will of your reality or your environment or other people to get what it is that you want. Hmm. So you're taking out that mechanical, I know the right way, I'm going to do things my way. I have to, to work, drive, yeah. push. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's where most people exist. The problem with that is it consumes so much free energy that most people are never actually able to achieve anything. Mm. So when I lived in Los Angeles and I had this amazing life or so-called amazing life, um, it was all made with inner intention. 
And what happened was it depleted me so much that once I had accomplished some things, I was gone emotionally. Mm -hmm. I was depressed. I was void of anything spiritual or any connection, meaningful connection with my reality. Once I started to work with outer intention, it's like your reality feeds you back energy because you're giving other people and your environment what it's asking for. And they in turn give you the fuel to do what it is that you want to do or what you want to accomplish. Can you give us an example of what you mean by that? that what would be something that we would be giving the environment or people? Okay, so one of, this, this, this isn't a human example, but it's a good example that I like to use. I mean, I could use a lot of different examples, but this is, this is one of the most simple examples that I've come up with. Dogs, okay? Mm -hmm. We love dogs, right? Dogs are our friends, they're our companions, but there is a mutual exchange going on there. Mm -hmm. The dog is getting something from you, right? Food, protection, shelter, all those things, in exchange for what it's giving to you, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a, mutual, mm -hmm. there's a mutual exchange going on there. Now you could have an animal run up to your house and snarl and ask you for food, right? Are you going to give that animal food? Probably mm -hmm. not, right? You're not supposed to feed wild animals coming and snarling and because it's just gonna create more of that. But the dog is willing to bring some things to the table that naturally makes you want to care for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So this is essentially, you could apply this analogy to everybody and everything. Mm -hmm. We dress things in this way where we want to push through and say, we want what's ours or I want what's mine. And I want to, I'm going to fight for it. Or I'm going to scream and yell until I get it. I mean, maybe not actually scream and yell, but you get the idea. Mm -hmm. But there's another way. You know, there's, there is a way, and I have figured this out for myself, it's taken me a number of years, but I finally figured it out, that I can very easily get the things that I want without having to fight for them anymore. I don't have to go and snarl at somebody's door asking for food. Mm -hmm. There are opportunities there that just you know, and when you, and when you practice these techniques, all of this becomes very, very clear and very transparent. You mm -hmm. find exactly your slot that you can fit into where somebody else or your environment is going to be getting something, you know, from you, and you're going to be deriving what you need to accomplish the thing that you set out to do. Interesting. Yes. Is, this, is this like, I mean, it, it sounds a little bit like law of attraction, but different. So do you, is it, is it in the same realm? Is it the same similar type of teaching or is it different? Okay. So it is definitely different. Mm -hmm. um, it is similar in the sense that you are manifesting things into your reality that you want. You know, mm -hmm. since I've discovered transurfing, an abundance of things have come in my direction in a different way. I used to study law of attraction or practice law of attraction, but the main difference between law of attraction and transurfing is that the law of attraction sort of teaches you to desire things. Okay. And when you desire things, like if you think hard enough about something and if you desire something enough, it'll come into your reality. The reality of that is sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But what happens is you have built up an expectation in your mind that mm -hmm. you're going to get the thing. So that's where law of attraction actually is cruel in a lot of ways because, it, you know, they've taught, uh, the, the, the author has taught people that all you have to do is really desire something. And yes, it's great when you desire something and you get it. But when you don't get it, that's where the law of attraction falls mm -hmm. against reality transurfing. Reality transurfing teaches you to ask your reality for something, but not to expect it. 
Therefore, you never feel disappointment. And there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of practices in reality transurfing that help you deal specifically with um, not building what we call excess potential. So excess potential is when you build your energy up with the anticipation of something mm -hmm. and when it doesn't happen then there's reality which is like somewhere right here right mm -hmm. and then there's you that have built yourself up and when you don't achieve what you have been desiring you fall but you fall even past mm -hmm. the, the the level of reality here you fall down here and this mm -hmm. is where depression is mm -hmm. or feeling unsatisfied or feeling like you're not getting what you deserve. So uh, Transurfing teaches you how to not play this game where you're going to be going up and down, back and forth. Like I, I want so, this. So, so what is Go that? Ahead. Is that by not, is that by not just, just not building, just, just not building an idea up, just sort of being with reality. Just, yeah, just, I guess being with reality. And then as the, the, the great things in reality go up, then, then you go up with that. Maybe is that, is that kind of what you mean? Okay. So, so here's, here's the interesting part of, of reality transurfing. And this is again, a difference between the law of attraction and transurfing. Mm. The law of attraction teaches us that things that we want are far away. But in reality, and reality transurfing, uh, things that we want are all, all right around us all the time. I mean, even you, you're sitting in LA, you have probably millions of opportunities around you. You, mm -hmm. you have lots of money, you have beautiful homes and beautiful cars. You just have to gain access to those things, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to say that you know, trans surfing is all about getting what you want material wise. It's much more than that. But what happens is so we, <clears throat> we have to insert ourselves into a layer of reality where those things are much more abundant and they come to us a lot easier. Mm. When you're, when you're thinking like, oh, I wish I had a million dollars, you are, you are imagining that there's a million dollars out there and somehow you're going to connect with it. Mm -hmm. Transurfing teaches you that you just need to choose the path or the track, as we put it, that that million dollars is on. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you need to just then systematically and methodically take your steps towards the million dollars. It's not a wish or a desire. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. You're just going to step towards what you want. But at the same time, it also teaches you to emotionally disconnect from this desired thing. So mm -hmm. in case it the, your reality has different plans for you. You're not mm -hmm. devastated that you didn't get the million dollars. Mm -hmm. But if you do what trans surfing says to do, you only really have that one option is to step towards the things that you have chosen to, to take for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I know this sounds a little like, wow, it sounds too easy or it sounds maybe too hard, but it's, it's really just a matter of connecting with what it is that you want, not wishing for it, not hoping for it, not thinking that it's for somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's connecting with what you want, figuring out the easiest way from point A to point B, and then just taking your steps in that direction. I like that. One of my things in life is just deciding, deciding what you want, figuring out the steps and then doing it, <laughs> you know, like moving to LA, everyone thought that, Oh, that was, how did you do this? Is this massive thing? It's actually not. It's actually not. Once you just decide to find out the steps and do it, you know, start building up, starting a business in Joshua's tree and buying property and doing all this. So how did you do that? And actually it's, it's not as big as we make these things out to be when we feel like they're so far away from ourselves. Um, so I really like that. And just the idea that there is yeah. an abundance of opportunity everywhere. Um, yes. Yes. You got it. You got it. It's not that hard. Mm. You just have to make the choice, right? Your reality is what you have created in your mind. Mm -hmm. So some people view reality as 
you know, their reality is, is or, or the world is, is the greatest place, right? You know, these incredibly optimistic people that think that the world is beautiful and everything good is going to come to them. And then on the other side, you have somebody that's miserable and depressed and not getting what it is that they want. Now, these two people don't have any differences other than they have chosen to interpret reality in a different manner, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It's just their interpretation of reality. Right. So if, 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 you, if, you, if you view yourself and your relationship to your reality, that you're going to always be poor or that things are hard or that you're not going to you know, achieve what you want, then that's exactly what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. But if you, on the other hand, say it's not that hard, all I have to do is make choices and opportunities are everywhere. I just need to be open to them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So, so once you put yourself in that position, that's the track that I was talking about. You are, you are raising your, your vibration. You are raising yourself to another track. And when you do that, the higher that you move up on life tracks, the better and better things get and the more abundance of the things that you want exist. So mm -hmm. like living in my small town, right? I thought I was going to come to my small town and things were just going to be like, you know, quiet and not a lot of action, but the contrary, you know, I have all sorts of great things coming in and out of my reality because I have managed to find myself on a track where all those things exist. Mm -hmm. They're not impossible to me. It's just about opening up your mind, really, and choosing to connect with your reality in a different way. Fun stuff. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I'm single and I've been single for quite a long time and would like to be in a relationship. And I wonder, um, I'm de I, I really want to listen to the rest of this audiobook now because I'm fascinated by it. Um, if you were to take sort of some of the techniques or teachings from this, how would I get myself on the right track to, to a relationship that's kind of good? So <clears throat> it's, it's all about making, um, making room in your reality for mm -hmm. what it is that you're asking for, mm -hmm. right? If you want to inspire, Aspire to be an entrepreneur, but then you have a nine to five job, you're not going to really have the room in your life to do what it is that you want to do to have that freedom to become an entrepreneur. It's the same with relationships. I mean, you, you have to step back and take again, your inner intention out of it right? Mm -hmm. So you're thinking to yourself, I want to be in a relationship and I'm just going to talk openly with you here. I'm, I can be a little bit, I can be a little bit curt when it comes to this stuff. So, yeah. okay. So, so, so you, you have this mentality. I want a relationship, right? Um, what do I need to do to get into a meaningful relationship mm -hmm. where with transurfing, it teaches you that you need to start thinking in the opposite direction. What is a man that I would desire? What is he looking for? Mm -hmm. Right? What is, say, say I want a life partner. What is a life partner that looks appealing to me? What is he desiring? What is his will? Right. So then you start playing off the will of another person and boom, you're in a relationship. Right. Mm. You're not doing that thing where you're forcing your you're trying to get reality to bend to your will. Mm. You need to start bending your reality's will to meet your needs. So a lot of people, when you get into the nuts and bolts of it, they'll say, well, gosh, that sounds like manipulation, right? But it's not manipulation. It's, it's taking the desires of others and playing into them in an authentic way mm -hmm. that actually makes the person 
want to give you exactly what it is that you want. Mm. I mean, it's really very, very simple. And mm. again, most, most people are driving their, their selves, driving their realities, driving their relationships. Take it, take it, take my will. Yeah. Yes. Take my will. Exactly. But once you flip it around and you start playing on the will of what is outside of you, it's like magic. Things come to you so easily and you're like, this is amazing. This Mm. absolutely works. This absolutely works. But you don't really understand it until you know this and you've tried it once or twice and you've seen it. And then all of a sudden it's like you have a golden key in your hand, a golden magical key that you can insert pretty much into any situation and turn the lock and get what it is that you want. And I know that sounds fantastic. This is cool. <laughs> and that leads me on nicely. Um, you have kindly offered to give an introductory um, lesson uh, yes. to one of our listeners. So thank you so much for that. I think that is brilliant. Um, I think this would be a great opportunity for you just to talk a bit about. Um, you say you don't you don't take on a lot of clients because you've already got a very packed schedule. Um, but when you what what is the criteria for working with someone and and how do you work with them uh, to do this stuff? Okay, so the main, the main thing that I look for is that a person is not trying to um, achieve something with their own will. That's really the first, um, you know, I, I, I need to see that there is at least the ability for them to understand that there's another way to do it. Now, I've had a lot of people come to me and they say, oh, I want to marry this person or, oh, I want to, you know, start this business. And then as we get into the lessons and we get into the, 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 the material, they just keep showing that they're trying to work from their will. Mm. And as long as you're doing that, I cannot help in any way. Like, and so, so now after having done this for a number of years, I can see, you know, it, I can see up front who sort of gets this right off the bat and who doesn't. And if you don't get it, it's not to say that you never will, but maybe you just need a little more time or you need to read the book. Mm -hmm. So if the person hasn't read the book, but they understand playing with reality in a different way to get it, get what it is that you want. That's, that's sort of what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I have my own little, things that I look for, but that's, that's, that's pretty much the first prerequisite there. And do you work with people? Is it, is it sort of like an eight week thing? Does it take, is there like sort of a typical amount of time that you work with someone until they're kind of ready to go and take that little magic key on their own? Or is it different for every person? So I sell, um, I sell classes by the module, which is four, one to one and a half hour sessions. Um, most of the time I tell people, uh, well, I always tell people in the, in the very beginning, um, I'm not interested in making any lifelong students. I want to give you the, the, as quickly as possible. Um, so you can get on your way to creating your own reality. My, my ideal situation is to keep people for one module only. Mm-hmm. Now, after a module is completed, if people still want to continue, I have had students continue. I've had people take all four modules. I've trained people to become instructors. So there's various levels that you mm-hmm. can kind of go with this. But ideally, you know, four sessions is enough for you to see at least some transformation in your everyday reality. That's very refreshing that it doesn't have to be like a, <laughs> I know, it's for so the rest cool. of your life program. I do find that that's one thing I struggle against, struggle with um, sort of personal development and courses where it's just sort of continually keeping you within the programs. Um, no. it's like, what's really the intention? Is it just to yes. make is it to help you or is it just to keep making money? That, exactly. I'm not going to speak against any of the other, you know, creating your own reality schools and all that. Mm. Um, I will just say, say for my own material, if you don't, if you don't see, if you, if you, you know, decide to go with somebody like Bob Proctor or, or a law of attraction school, if you don't see some instant change 
it's not going to ever come. Mm -hmm. Like really you should see change almost immediately. And that's how quickly it happened for me. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's, yeah, that's all I'll say about that. Yeah. Well, thank you. And um, thank you again for offering the, the one hour uh, introductory transurfing introductory lesson with you. That's incredible. We're going to have a link to that um, on all the show notes and everything, as well as I want to include the link to the, the audio book as well and your website and how people can stay in touch. Um, That's great. This is blowing my mind. <laughs> oh, I, I, hope, I hope you continue with, with reading. Um, mm. You know, it's, it's, I know it seems a little daunting or listening. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and my advice to you would be if you listen to um, the audio once and you, and you, you feel the information, like you see what it's saying and you feel it and you're like, okay, this, I, I, I get it. Listen to it again, you know, because like I said, we're all programmed, mm -hmm. right? And our programming is so deep that just listening to something once is not going to um is not going to reprogram your your mind yeah, like your whole lifetime of conditioning yeah exactly. yeah exactly yeah. and and for me really the reason that i do this the real reason i do this is because when i'm making the seminars when i'm working on you know my intellectual work my 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 manual or writing something um or giving instruction, it's just reiterating the information yeah. Yeah. over and over and over. And I notice if for a while I say, hey, I don't, I'm not going to take any students and I don't do any transurfing work, I will start to lose start. it. Yeah, go, go back, you know, yeah. and then I'm like, oh, I got to get back into it. So as long as I'm doing this stuff, I feel like a million bucks. Not to mm. say I'm dependent on it, I just prefer it in my reality rather than not. So. It's funny because I was, I had a very solid practice of reading in the morning and at night, um, personal, personal development books, books on mindset, attitudes, things like that. And, um, I found that a lot of the things they're saying the same thing in all these different books. It's the same things, really. It's the same sort of teachings and lessons that are coming out time and time again, but it's all being yeah. worded in different ways and everyone's got their own sort of term for it. And I'm like, that's cute. That's fine. Um, and then when I stop reading, I do feel a little, I, I start to feel a little bit lost again. And so it's just that idea of just, just keep, keep the practice, keep the practice, yes. practice of doing stuff. Yes. One quick last point, but um, because you'd said about it helps to work with a student that isn't so much about their own um, inner intention, inner intent. One of the things that I struggle with is being very focused, very driven. I've created a lot of stuff in my reality, and like I can decide, and I find the steps, and then I go out and make the thing happen. I'm like, great. And then there's things like relationships where I'm like, doesn't always work to be that driving force. And so it's so even though you say it's like. Um, uh, taking in uh, playing to sort of their will isn't that in a way having intent even just surely putting yourself how can I sort of bend to like my environment's will or they the person's will isn't that then my intention too I get very confused with how how hard to push or not yeah so here's the thing with that um when when and I've had that question before pitched in a little bit of a different way but essentially what happens is when so so yes if you if you are solely um if you are solely going after somebody's own will to get what it is that you want you 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 are in a way still setting up you know yourself with your own inner intention mm -hmm. um and creating that excess potential there that i talked right. about where you build your you know you 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 put yourself up higher to create space for you to fall down emotionally. Um, but here's the thing. When you, there's another very important concept in transurfing and it's called um, drop importance. And drop importance, it's, you know, it, it's, it's very, um, a, a very Zen sort of philosophy. It's not, it's cr cr not creating any, um, significance on anything, right? Mm -hmm. So I know that sounds counter counterintuitive. Like, how can I build a business and be a millionaire and still view it as non significant? Um, and again, I like it, that though because it just takes the pressure off of everything. 
Oh, absolutely. So that's when it when you come back to that place where you decide what it is that you want to take and you just make your steps towards that thing without creating excess potential, without building importance on it, right? All these weird things start happening to us when we do that. Mm -hmm. So in regards to relationships, um, if you, there, there's another concept, it's called a slide. So essentially what a slide is, is a slide, you can make a positive slide, like I want to live this sort of life. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a imaginary shield, I guess you could say, or filter you put in front of your, your eyes to see reality that you already have that thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I know this sounds like law of attraction, but you start living as though you already have that thing. And magically that thing sort of appears in your life. Now you don't get to decide the time of when it does, but if you live long enough in a manner that you've already achieved this thing or gotten this thing, it's just a matter of time until it comes into your reality with, with, uh, relationships or anything else that you want, um, that you have stated, you know, you've declared, I want this thing in my reality. There's also another way that you can do it is you can play a negative slide. And that negative slide is the opposite. I'm going to live in a manner, you don't do it very long, you only do it for a very short period of time, but I'm going to live in a manner that I don't get what it is that I want. And I'm going to see that it's actually okay. Mm. It, it completely neutralizes your desire, right? Wow. So when you so when you do this thing, it's like you you neutralize your reality, and and you don't then feel. And I hate to use this word, but since we're talking about relationships, and I I will, I will use it because I will say at a certain point I probably acted desperate, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Desperate comes from feeling that pent up excess potential. Mm -hmm. I've got to get that thing. I've got to get that thing. But if you can play that negative slide, I don't need a man. I am perfectly capable on my own. And you play that slide in your mind, you sort of just go into yourself. You're not, you're not wanting it. Okay. Yeah. And then you're, a, then you're desirable. Right. So I have to share this with you because you're blowing my mind. And it's exactly what happened to a girlfriend of mine. She's 47. She's stunning, even though she looks like she's like 32 or something. She's 47, had struggled with relationships, had been single for a while, was doing the dating sites and dating apps, not meeting anyone, very disheartened with it. And eventually she just said like a year ago to the universe, you know what? I'm done. Like I surrender. If you think it's better for me to be on my own, then I, I'm just going to be on my own. Like I give up trying to find this person. I give up whatever. I just trust that if I'm destined to be single, then that's what I'm going to be. And I'm just going to be okay with that. And then a few weeks later, she sat on a park bench having an ice cream and some dude's like, Hey, how's your ice cream? And they got engaged at Christmas. Yeah. And so I love, that's exactly what you just said. Like it's, she, yeah. it's exactly that. So that is not a coincidence. No. That is yeah. absolutely not a coincidence. Mm. Yeah. And that is, that is the essence of transurfing, mm. right? Giving up the desire. It's choosing to have something, but dropping the importance and giving up the desire. And once you do that, something magical happens. It's like you have released a tension that you have been building between what it is that you want and yourself. Mm -hmm. And this tension pulls tight like a rubber band. And that's why people feel a lot of times like they're spinning their wheels, mm -hmm. right? Like they're just going and they're spinning their wheels and they're not getting anywhere. And they're not getting, you know, that it's, it's, it's that they have just created this force field where they're essentially repelling Mm -hmm. what it is that they want. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, but our minds don't work like that. We've been trained otherwise, right? We've been trained to work with our inner will, but it just, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't suit us. It doesn't, it doesn't actually work. Mm -hmm. You can get some things, but it's either going to be coincidence, luck, or, you're going to be exhausted when you achieve the thing, yeah. you know, and it's the same with, it's the same with the dating. 
you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It's super exhausting. I prefer my <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> this has been fantastic. Thank you so much. I, yeah, a whole new world that I'm excited about exploring. So thank you. Yes. Thank you for the work you do and for the time that you spent with us today. Yes, absolutely. If you ever have any questions personally, just uh, email me. I'm more than Thank happy you. to share my advice. I appreciate it. Thanks awesome. again, Renee. And oh, lovely yeah. to see Thank you guys. You. I will be Thank back you. next week. Bye. <laughs>